Hey folks, we're just getting ready for worship. Thank you for being here. A couple of housekeeping things. First, the liturgy for today's service is found in the description. If you click on it, it'll take you right to a PDF file containing our readings and our prayers and all the other things that you need to participate in today's service. Second, if you like the content that we're putting out, please hit the like button down below and subscribe, and that way you can be notified of what we are about to do next. Third, and most important, if there's something we can pray with you about, please contact us either through the church website or in the comments below. Um, in order to protect your confidentiality, how about instead of telling us exactly what you need us to pray for, you just hit uh, prayers and we'll pray for, we'll pray for you. All right, uh, we're going to get ready to begin in just a few minutes. You ready? Thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning for morning prayer. Our service this morning begins on page 47 in your book of alternative services, or you can download your copy from the description below. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth, mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your, your praise. praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O oh come, let us worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. O oh come, let us worship. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, come, let us worship. worship. The Lord is our light and our life. O, o come, come, let us worship. worship. Alleluia. Oh, why don't you do it? Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. O, o come, come, let us worship. worship. And the Vianite, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout, shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. salvation. Let, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm today is number uh, 16. Psalm 16. A psalm of David. Keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the name of their gods. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence, and the pleasures of living with you forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the, the Son, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. I pray your hearts and minds will be open to the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the book of Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. You that are the Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, 
and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man held over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, and so I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried. His tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him and he would put one of his descendants on the throne. For seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witness. The scripture this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. The Word of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, 
Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in which in the presence of the disciples, which were not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let me get this off my chest. I cannot believe that it's snowing outside. I've been trying to figure out what I was going to say in this sermon for the better part of the week. And, uh, you know, we lost, we lost a friend this week. Um, many of you know Gavin, uh, who passed away. And I'm trying to figure out a way to make sense of this emotionally for myself. And then I come across this scripture that, that we have from, from 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new life in a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith, through your faith. All right, so God is promising us treasures in heaven. God is promising us this inheritance that when we die in heaven, we will be able to, to embrace and accept this inheritance. That's awesome. But what does that have to do with me right now i mean what does that have to do with the price of bananas what does that have to do with the with the needs of my family with the needs of my kids what does that have to do with with my grief with my anger with my whatever emotion i happen to be feeling many of you know me that in my preaching i'm much more focused on how the power of the gospel impacts our lives today as we walk through, as we walk through this world, as we encounter each other in relationship, as we deal with the stresses and the strains and the terrors of our world, how does the gospel of Jesus Christ help me navigate way, my way through this life? And so sometimes I find myself, when I read scriptures like this passage from 1 Peter, I find myself wondering what that has to do with me. And, I, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful or blasphemous, but really, what does that have to do with me right now? I'm not going to die. What do I need to worry about heaven for? What do I need to worry about treasures in heaven for? I need to worry about, about how to be the best possible man I can be right now, right now in the here and now. But today, that's changed. Today, as I think about, as I think about my friend Gavin, Gavin was younger than me. His passing brings me into direct contact with what Peter is saying in this, in his first letter. This scripture today, as I think about Gavin, springs to life because Gavin has showed me how much this scripture means to me right now. It's not just a matter of learning how to navigate the life that I currently have, but being a Christian also has this huge component of setting ourselves up to navigate the next life as well. Setting ourselves up through our faith to navigate how we will function and how we will live and where we will be when our time on earth is past. There is more to this life than just getting by there is the other life there is the preparation for the other life gavin's gavin's passing into the next world reminds us that there are things to come it's not just about the here and now while it's it's good to allow the gospel to speak into this moment we must also allow the gospel to pull us into the next moment 
We must allow the gospel to, to shine light on what is to come, even though what is to come might be 50, 60, 70 years down the road, and hopefully it's even longer than that. Because of Gavin's passing, the scripture that we read today becomes important in our today. Uh, because of Gavin's passing, the scripture that we read today that shines a light on these treasures that are stored up in heaven becomes relevant to us today because we see ourselves to a certain extent. Gavin passed away unexpectedly. Nobody, nobody had an expectation that he wouldn't be here tomorrow. But thanks to this moment, this scripture that I would normally look at and say, oh, that's about decades away, becomes very relevant for me today. Gavin's death brings all of us right to that point of eternal life and, 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 and salvation and the rewards thereof. Uh, we're able to appreciate and rejoice in what St. Peter, what St. Peter says in this letter, because we know that our brother is receiving it. And if our brother is receiving it, then we also know that we will have that inheritance as well. The only thing between where we are right now, whether it's Shelburne or some other part of the world, and the receipt of, of our heavenly inheritance, the only thing between us here and us there is our faith. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only aspect of the equation that we actually have any kind of control over. None of us have control over when we'll die. None of us can have control over how it will happen. None of us have control over whether or not we'll see it coming. But every single one of us has control over whether or not we will put our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and live our lives in ways that we can develop and enhance and strengthen and protect that faith. I pray God's blessings be upon you. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess the faith of our baptisms together as we say, I, I believe in God. In God. The, the Father Almighty, Almighty Creator of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the joy and hope, let us pray to all sorts of life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. Hear us, Lord of glory that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of glory. glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of, of glory. glory. That he may grant us humility to be shut subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of, of glory. glory. That he may provide those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord, Lord of, of glory. glory. That by this power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Mm -hmm. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit among among his people, that we may 
bear faithful witnesses to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Hear us Lord, Lord of glory. glory. Our collect of the day today. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as we think about and give thanks for the many gifts God has provided us, we also think about the many gifts we are to provide to him and to our neighbors. Let us pray. God of grace, you have freed us from our sins and made us a kingdom in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Accept all we offer you this day and strengthen us in the new life you have given us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who no trespass against us, lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now my good friend Bishop Tom Corston is going to offer us his blessing. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. God bless you all. Have a, have a great day and we'll see you again next week.